Now, when a judge is deciding on a case, they need to identify the following. They need to find out what happened. So what are the facts in the case that they are dealing with now? In addition to that, they also need to identify which law is applicable and how it is to be applied to the facts in front of them. If the applicable law is found in precedent, a judge then needs to refer to a judgment. Now, what is a judgment? A judgment is a lengthy document which is passed down after a decision is reached in a case. So if it, when a judge in a current case is trying to reach a decision in their case and they identify that it is the law is to be found in precedent, they need to go back to the judgment that was passed down when that precedent was reached. In the judgment, they will find quite a few pieces of information. They will find the facts of the decided case. They will find a lot of commentary by the judges that reached a decision in that previous case. And they will find the reason for the decision and the legal principles upon which that decision is based. It is this last part of the judgment that I mentioned. This is the part which is referred to as binding precedent. This is the part that we call the ratio decidendi. And the judge will then apply the law, the ratio decidendi, to the facts of their case that they are deciding, providing the facts of their case that they're trying to decide are sufficiently similar to the facts in the decided case, which of course will also be in the judgment they are reading or referring to. So now you have a general idea of where judges find binding precedents and how binding precedents are applied to cases that they are attempting to decide on. What we'll do next is we will look at a real judgment and we will identify the different parts of the judgment as well. And then you'll be able to get to see which part of a judgment is actually the binding precedent and which parts are not binding.